Yeah, that's looking very good, Bev. I haven't got a screwdriver or operator's license. I failed the exam. But never mind, just don't tell anyone and we should be fine. What have we got, Bev? A new crew member. No, it isn't. S Sally the Swan. <laughs> it does look like a swan. <laughs> what is it really, girl? It really is a lot smaller than I thought. Right. It really doesn't come out of its box. It's a water lock. Yeah, because um, our water lock is uh, is basically rusting, and it's just a matter of time. So they're very carefully, a healthy written in, and down here they're written out, and it even has a drain screw here that you can use to drain it. But I'm going to leave that alone. But this thing acts as a water trap to stop water coming back into the engine, and as an exhaust um, silencer, or what the Americans would call a muffler. And it basically deadens the sound from the engine and catches the water and makes sure the water comes from the engine and out and not the other way around. Oh. Ours is made from stainless steel and whatever incompetent Volvo designed it decided it would be a good idea to have stainless steel permanently immersed in warm salt water. And the inevitable is happening and it's rusting away from the inside. And when we start the engine now we get a big puff of water which is ready brown in colour. In other words it's full of rust. So and we have a rust stain on the inside of the boat. So it's quite clear our water lock is rusting away from the inside out. It's only a matter of time. So before it goes boom, we've got this little beauty. And our job today is to get it in. And it involves sliding hoses under this, and that is the worst job in a boat. <laughs> Apart from the toilet. True. But so before we start, we're going to do something really, really vital. We're going to have coffee. Absolutely. The other thing we've got to do is we've got to take all these tools, which is littering our back berth, out because somewhere under there is where we need to be working today. Yeah, um, we're just starting by taking measurements of everything. The uh, manual is very, very specific about um, how high the top of the swan neck uh, needs to be above um, the unit and things like that. Um, so we're just making sure that all the dimensions that we have are correct before we actually remove any of the bits. Yeah. So you can just see there in the distance the transom and the water outlet is that bit just there. Beverly's just um, taking the pipe off. Doing my best. Or at least taking her, doing her best to get it the It is pipe. coming off. But uh, as always, things are just not easy. Nope. So that was the easy pipe removed. Um, but now Bev's got to remove the hard one, which is somewhere under all this. that. Uh, we've got pipes from the uh, Eberspacher, water and another hose down there, which I'm not too sure exactly what that hose is. Which but, one? Uh, this one? No, this this one. Uh, bilge pump. Okay, so we've got a bilge pump under there as well, so yeah. she's got to try and remove the other hose. It's like a bad game show, it's like the Hunger Games <laughs> for pipes. Yeah. Well, we finally got the unit off and you can see here that the new unit is ever so slightly shorter. It matches the hose output end, but not at the input end from the engine. I suppose you could move it back a few centimetres and then be the other way around. Uh, the water that came out of it looks like this. And you can see it's got an absolutely beautiful colour if you like that <coughs> sort of thing. So Beverly, have you got your screwdriver operating um, licence? Well, I'm having to use the screwdriver now, but no, I... I haven't got a screwdriver or operator's license, I failed the exam. But never mind, just don't tell anyone and we should be fine. Is there any I mean, do you need a license to operate a screwdriver? Is it, is it heavy machinery? No. <laughs> hey! 
It could be classed as heavy machinery, I suppose. It could be classed as wreckage. Right. If we uh, just turn this round, you can see here where the problem is, this area here. Oh, I mean, let me just get that. Oh yes, this, this is the problem the... is just here. This is where it's all. This is all us mucking about getting it off. That wasn't there previously. You know, this bit here is actually just... quite clean, but this is the bit where it's all rusting away. So we're going to remove this rubber hose, take this end cap out, and have a little look inside. Yeah, but basically that's where the rust was coming from. Yeah. So, so apparently it's just a a run... once again using my non-licensed screwdriver. But this time she's using it as a lever. I know. Archimedes would be proud, Beverly. This would be a Archimedes Type 1 lever. Yeah, that's why I said Archimedes would be proud. I know. It's not the inferior Type 2 or Type 3 levers, it's a Type 1 lever with the fulcrum between the load and the effort. <sighs> yeah, so... Basic physics, and if you don't all know that, you should all go back to basic physics class. Everybody should go to basic physics class. It should be a mandatory requirement. Yeah. Uh, Beverly, I have whoa, to... Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, that was called a crack. That was called metal crumbling. <laughs> that was called stainless steel crumbling. It shouldn't crumble. Yeah. Actually, this thing seems to go back quite a ways. It's yeah, I was, was going to say, it looks like it's a bit bigger than you thought. It is, actually. Come on, Aziz, do your thing. It might be a full thing, Bev. No, it isn't. You can, you can squeeze it down. So oh, okay. To about there. Right, okay. So it's actually, uh, like you say, it's a... It's an end cap that goes into literally a rubber tube. That's mm. all this is. It's a rubber tube with two steel bits on the end. Mm. And one of our steel bits is rotten. Yeah. Now I could cut the rubber tube in half if you've got absolute total faith in this. But we might save that for later in the end of the video and then pretend we did it halfway through. <laughs> yeah, but I hope to God we have got faith in this because I tell you now. <laughs> it, you is, it is scary actually. You're, um, not gonna, you're not gonna pull that back in now. Okay, just lift up to me. It is quite scary actually because you're going to take this thing and you hope you've got all the measurements right because if you haven't, will it pump water back into your engine and your engine go boom and then you've got five grand bill for a new engine. I mean, it is the only one on the market that has the same diameter pipe as this one. This, according to my calculations, is round about the four and a half litre mark. This is 4.3. I don't think the difference is significant. But, you know, you just hope that everything's right, that this doesn't create additional back pressure, that everything's fine. How do you know? You're taking everybody else's word for it and you're just hoping that when you put this thing in... <laughs> yeah. It's a huge act of faith. But you're destroying this one now. Because I can tell you now... I'm this destroying it. I'm simply trying to get the bloody thing out. No, you are destroying that. You're not going to be able to put that back on, Bev. You may be right. You can't. That's too gone now. <laughs> All right, stop for coffee. We're soon into the uh, section where we answer the question. But every every other person doesn't want to ask what the heck's in one of these babies. Okay, here we go. Rusty water would be the simple answer. Yeah, definitely just a pipe. And a hose, really. We've seen this. Oh, yes. Let me get rid of this brown stuff. I'm going to eat my dinner off that later. Well, it's not my dinner. Beverly's going to use that. To... Look, Alice has got loads of them. If you check, I'll buy a new one. What, a new chopping board? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they're expensive. No, but it's just like, you know... It's only rusty water. Yeah, I know. <sighs> so this is where our leak has been coming from all that time. It's this yeah, bit here. it's just this bit here because you can see. In it's fact, just... here it is. Look. Yeah. Oh no. gosh. This is this is toast. This is definitely. Yeah. This is what we were worried about um, going. It's a, and the fracture seems. To have been um, and as you can see, Beverly was not using a lot of force. Beverly doesn't have a lot of force. <laughs> I know Beverly doesn't have a lot of force, but... Um, but basically, this stainless steel iron cap, this bit of it in here, as you can see, quite clearly, sits underwater all the time. And this well's not looking in the best of condition. Yeah. But um, because stainless needs oxygen to maintain its stainlessness, this is deprived of oxygen being in hot seawater, which has had the oxygen 
boiled out of it so it sits in here and it rusts mm. and um, uh, as you can see that bit at the bottom was where the rust was coming from yeah and this hole now we fix that for once in our lives before we had water in our bilge for no good way, reason there's another bit here once again, if you look at the amount of force I'm putting on, if you just pull back a bit. Okay. Look at the amount of force I'm putting on. Well, a little bit more to hold the screwdriver steady, but you can see. Right, so that's... I'm, I'm doing this with my fingertips, look. Yeah, so again, you know... I'm not putting anything into this, and it's it's, it's just buckling this up. And Yeah. So, Bev, what's just happened? I'm glad to report that we are now proper cruising DIY fix-your-own-problems yachties. We've bought our first pack of West System epoxy. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid to say this is what we think of. We have as we have arrived. We actually have some epoxy on. I uh, know. So this is we're going to make a little um, caddy come stand come wooden thing for the water lock to sit on, and because it's made of wood and it's going in a damp area of the boat. We're coating it with epoxy. No fiberglass will be harmed in the making of this stand. Yeah, so we've not quite... No. What we're we're not fully fledged. Not fully fledged. We haven't <laughs> lost our virginity just yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, what we're going to do with this, we're going to make it up into just um, a nice mix of epoxy and we're just going to paint it on the wood to impregnate it and protect it. That's it. Yeah. Just make sure that's the only thing that's impregnated. <laughs> <laughs> So things are just going from bad to worse because I've just cut this piece of webbing using my second best kitchen knife and I'm melting it using the lighter for my gas cooker. <laughs> my kitchen stuff is fast becoming DIY tools. But apart from that, that seems nice. This is the webbing strap that will secure the water lock to the brackets I've made on the side. It's sitting on its little bracket. It's quite nicely. And I'm going to put this up. The hoses will give it some more support. And the hoses seem to reach. They all seem to be in the right positions. So I've got great hopes that the darn thing is finally in. Yay! Well, I want to put this strap on it. Yay! Go and say that again now. Go on. I think we can say that Elton said that it's at least 70% successful. <laughs> I've got it on the first three quarters. I just need to get a bit more on. But it's going on. It's going on easier than these things usually do with marine holes yeah so um the bubble uh has made a big difference oh the bubble's doing a great job um not perfect but you're living if once you're living on the bro then perfect is an illusion lunchtime doubly so right <sighs> all right so we've done our pre-checks we've done our pre-checks well that's it all in in the end, um, that bracket down there is actually not resting on the floor. And we do have some securing bolts to do. Uh, and apparently we've got some more securing bolts to do. But that is it there. You can see there it's got the double clamps. Uh, double clamped on the other side. But now I'm afraid to say it's the acid test. And that means, that means Beverly's going to start the engine. How are you doing down there? Uh, we've got um, we've got water. We have <laughs> we've 
got water and we got soupy bubbles because You got what? Soupy bubbles. Oh I excellent news of all the fairy liquid I put on the hose to get uh, the thing clear. I, I can't hear a thing. We're gonna have to skip this. Okay, I'm gonna increase the revs. <laughs> okay. Revs going up. Yeah, that's looking very good, Bev. 